Hey, Aubrey, welcome to an IELTS bonus. Hey, welcome to you, Jessica, to this exciting welcome IELTS bonus. <laughs> um, why are we here today, Aubrey, on this uh, special occasion? We are teaching a web class, you guys, free live web class with Jessica and myself, and it's going to be really fun. We've got a few little surprises on this one. We're going to bring up a student on stage. We've got some fun polls, so you don't want to miss it. And it's all about business English being informal and formal at work. When is it appropriate? How do you do it? What language do you need to use? Anyone working in English or studying for IELTS needs to know this. And today we're going to share specifically how it can help you on the IELTS exam. Yeah, guys. So yes, this is a business English web class, but it is all about, like Aubrey said, formal and informal English. Um, guys, I hope you realize how this can help you on the IELTS exam. On the speaking test, guys, remember that the examiner listens for a range of vocabulary. You must be able to show your ability to communicate both informally in speaking part one and formally in speaking part three. So guys, that is exactly what this web class is about. So before we get to an example that you can use in writing, guys, I want to share with you how to sign up. Go to allearsenglish.com slash better. That's B-E-T-T-E-R um, and grab your spot. We are having two of these web classes, guys, April 12th and 16th. So you can for sure attend one of those or maybe both. I don't know. So sign up, guys. Grab your spot, allearsenglish.com slash better. So we've already said that this tone, that knowing the difference between formal and informal English will help you on IELTS speaking for everyone. But how else will this language help students on IELTS, Aubrey? Yes. If you're taking the general training IELTS, you are going to need to write a letter and your task response score depends a lot on your tone. Mm -hmm. If it needs to be informal or formal, it depends on who you're writing to. And this is one of the most difficult things about the writing task one letter for general training. It's difficult. Totally. It's not easy for students to figure this out. You need strategies. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so guys, you cannot get higher than a six. If you have variations in tone, if your tone is inconsistent now, on the other hand, if your tone is like totally wrong, if you're just approaching it informally too much, then you get a five for task. So guys, tone is vital to your task score for this general training letter, guys. Um, so let's throw out an example from the web class. Actually, we're giving you a sort of insider sneak peek here. Um, what is an example of some of the tone we will teach in the web class, Aubrey? Yes, exactly. So in maybe an old business textbook, you might see, you know, dear Mr. Smith, I greatly appreciate the effort you have put forth on this project, but the reality check is that might not be appropriate if you're writing to a friend or a neighbor, someone exactly. you know well. So you can't just take this formal English and assume it'll work in every letter. You have to think about who are you writing to? What is your relationship? How well do you know them? I could totally see a student memorizing a sentence like this from, yes. you know, a template or a textbook somewhere. Um, and then just thinking, oh, like anytime I say thank you to somebody in a letter, mm. I can use the sentence. It looks great. It must be high scoring. This is an awesome sentence. And then on the IELTS exam, they're asked to thank a friend for something, or they're asked to thank a neighbor for a favor. Right. And they start the letter. They're like, Hey, Bill, how, how's it going? What's up? I greatly appreciate the effort you have put forth on this project. <laughs> and like much too it formal. doesn't make any sense, doesn't first of all, because it's like you're not talking about a project. And then second of all, yeah, it's too formal. Yeah, you would never say that to someone you know. This is someone that, especially if you know them well, but even if it's a neighbor, you don't know really well, it's still way too formal. And to even to refer to something as a project, if it's like watering your plants or walking your dog, I know. this is a too informal of a way to refer to that favor. Totally. Yeah. Um, so let's throw out a better example. Um, let's say you are writing to a colleague, for instance, right? A coworker. And um, it's a coworker, you know, well, 
right? So it's sort of bordering on that tone. So this would be a semi-formal tone because you're writing to a coworker, but it's someone that you know well, right? Um, so you could say something like, hey, Jack, I wanted to drop you a note just to say thank you for the incredible work you put in. So you can see how much more informal that sentence is and therefore more highly, it would score more highly for task because the tone is more appropriate. Yes, exactly. And this is hitting that semi-formal tone that is like a unicorn where you have a work <laughs> colleague, you're still wanting to stay a little formal. It's not like your buddy that you shoot pool with, but right. you certainly wouldn't be as formal as that first phrase. And this sentence really hits that, right? Incredible work. You're still being very polite and respectful, which is appropriate for a work colleague, but using that phrasal verb put in, drop you a note. Yeah. These are more informal verbs. That's getting you that semi-formal tone. Exactly. Exactly. So like an informal way, it'd be like, Hey Jack, what's up? Thanks a lot, brother. Right. And so like, I just want to give you guys a contrast. So you know that this, how semi-formal this is in the middle, right. right? Between formal and informal. Um, okay guys. So remember to sign up for this web class. Yes, it is about business English, but the topic will help you on your IELTS speaking and writing. doesn't matter if you're academic or general guys, you have to know the difference between formal and informal language. So you can use the right vocabulary. You could hit the right tone on all parts of the exam. So sign up guys, grab your spot right now. Cause it's going to be huge. I know tons of people are going to come to this web class. So remember it is live. It is not recorded, but it is free. So grab your spot, allersenglish.com slash better. That's B E T T E R. Yes. And we will see you there. I will see you there, Jessica. <laughs> I will see you there, Aubrey. <laughs> okay, All right. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs>